Hey, good morning, everybody, or afternoon or evening. Uh, welcome to 50 Question Friday for November 13th. Hey, happy Friday the 13th. Um, so, yeah, glad, glad everybody's here today. So we'll start out, as usual, reading some questions from the internet. Um, quite a few questions, because it has been a little while since we've been here, so... I'll just scroll through and find the oldest question here. All right, regarding the Activator 3.1, I'm interested in this item, and though I have read the description, what are the best ways for me to use this item? So the Activator 3.1, um, basically it's kind of like having a tensor field generator because it does have that on there, but it is, it's so much more. I mean, it is bringing in the, these light columns that are creating a sacred space. Um, basically, the Activator 3.1 is just simply a tool that you set someplace and you can forget about it. It will hold the space and, and just do the work. Um, but again, like with all the tools, you can consciously connect with it. Um, you can, um, you know, because basically when you're in that field, it's gonna be doing work. But the more that we put our attention to it and in the heart space, the more work it'll do for us. Um, so, yeah, the, the activator is kind of a sit in and forget it. But, you know, taking it around the way that we've used it, um, we've put it onto a sacred site that we already have here in town. Um, here in Buffalo Gap, South Dakota, we have one of the 13 Lakota sacred sites. There's a crystal city below there. We put the activator on there and it just had to stay there um, because it creates such a space for all of those beings right there. It's like um, it created a safe, sacred space to where those those higher dimensional beings and those beings from below were able to come up into that safe space and just be right here on this plane. Um, also, the activator, I use one as a hood ornament on my vehicles. Um, just always have because it does some pretty phenomenal clearing. Uh, going on to the next question from the email here. Um, okay, so this one is going to be a little bit more in depth. So I will answer this one on my own later. Um, and then some, yeah. It's just another question there. So let's see. What else do we have here? Okay, you know, I think most of these questions I'm just going to have to answer via email. And um, we can get into questions here in a minute. And yay, there's a lot of my really favorite people on here today. Good to see everybody. Um, awesome. Well, I hope everybody is doing well. I know everybody's kind of missed getting together and chatting with each other here. Um, so, gosh, what is new? Um, it's been a pretty wild time. Uh, we noticed that you know, we're manifesting like crazy, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, and we really need to watch our thoughts. Um, and as things come up, we need to do the release work. Um, right now, what has been coming up a lot with uh, Brenda and her work are vows and clearing vows because, um, oh yeah, and welcome to my home. I'm changing my office around here, so I'm moving my office to my home and I haven't got the um, the video production set up yet over at the studio. So uh, we're doing this in the home for today. But um, the work that Brent has been doing, vows have been coming up a lot recently. So in other lifetimes, we can take like maybe a vow of poverty or a vow of celibacy or I a vow to avenge your death, you know, and all the vows that we take, they end up within that lifetime becoming just a resonant field of your life because it is just what you do. It is, it's, 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 it's your very sacred vow. And we're finding that right now, a lot of that's coming up and causing us issues in this here now. So um, 
part of that is releasing vows. Um, and so here at the end of, of our webinar today, we will do um, some journey work and we're just going to go in and I'll teach you a super simple way to go into the heart space, soul before you, do the release work. Super, super simple, easy. Um, so we'll work on that technique here. And then hoping to get Brenda into the studio here. Gosh, she's supposed to be over. I got to set up the filming studio because she's going to do a video for the sacred space of the heart um, because it is so flipping important. And we're always trying to refer people to, you know, going into the heart space. And so Brenda and I are just going to set up and do a quick video um, and get that out there so that everybody has the simplest and easiest way to just to go into the heart space. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's take our three breaths and go into the heart space. So if you've never gone into the sacred space of the heart with us before, um, we call it the Trinity breath. It's simply putting your attention onto your physical heart where we find our light and then we connect with the light of earth, the light of creation. We bring them both together within us. And then that moves our consciousness from the head back into the heart. And so that's the simple easy of going into the heart space. So here we go. You guys are welcome to just close your eyes if you wish, putting your attention onto your physical heart, finding your light, your soul's fire, sending your light down to the heart of the earth. And as you connect with that heart of Gaia, she sends her light right back up. And that just expands through your heart and into every cell of your body. Such a beautiful way to ground with the earth, heart to heart. Next, we connect with the heart of creation, source, soul, creator, God. And we connect our light to the light of creation. Then we take a breath and we breathe in the lights from both creation and from the earth and bring those into our heart. And release. And you just drop right down to that heart space. All right. So let's see here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and catch these questions here on, on the message side, and then we'll go over here to the questions tab. Um, let's see what to do about sleep. I have the wand, the golden fire generator, the illuminated heart pendant, and I'm struggling severely after an infection while morning down and out. Um, so to, to, you know, for sleep, since you have that golden fire and light wand, that is one that we have a lot of people talk about the golden fire and light wand, just keeping it under your pillow or close to you because it only produces a small field when it's just sitting innately. And so just having that, you know, this little guy or the large version, just having that close to you at night and even the quantum healer contains, you know, everything with that, um, with this, the golden fire and light wander and the quantum healer as well. So, I mean, these tools are the ones that, you know, a lot of people talk about sleeping with um, for a better night's sleep, but I tell you, it's just, it's been an interesting time right now. So, um, you know, Amar and I just, I don't know what to say about the sleep right here offhand. Um, be something we'd really have to look into there. Um, Because, yeah, I mean, having some of the fields, the, the, the tools around, um, you know, a lot of times it will cause disruptions in sleep for maybe a day or two. And that's just where a small percentage of people. And then after that, usually being in these fields, you just sleep a lot better. Um, anyway, yeah. We'll, and I, I believe I saw your email, too, about the sleep. So uh, we'll look into that more and maybe we can chat about that some more here. Um, and Tambra. Hey, thanks, Tambra. Saying that I was looking good and healthy. I know, finally feeling more like myself. And I'm growing hair on my head for the first time in 10 years. Trying that out. Um, I was wondering if the infinite light pendant eventually causes a permanent shift in our energy. It seems that I'm holding the energy whether or not I'm wearing it or not. I love the pendant and wear it most all the time, but I feel that my energy field has acclimated to the new energy of the pendant. 
totally. That is what we want, is we want to utilize these tools as space holders and training wheels. So they are going to hold this space and they are going to bring you into that higher resonant vibration. And, you know, um, so yeah, because there's a lot of tools that I don't wear anymore, like the gold fire coil, um, because it entrained my energy field to flow in that way. And yes, that is very true. We keep these things in our field and we eventually are emitters of that same energy. Um, and then it's great, you know, to be able to wear it if you ever drop down in vibration and you need help getting back up there or if you're walking out into the world where you're having to put your attention onto 3D reality and need that extra space holder, then that pendant is phenomenal again for those instances. But that's really fantastic that you've incorporated that into your field because that's pretty phenomenal, especially for the infinite light pendant because that infinite light pendant is a pretty high vibrating pendant and it does you know bring through that that blue light that comes from that universe beyond duality um so that's pretty fantastic um let's see will we be teaching workshops workshops on how to make tensor rings no actually um we we don't we have a lot of people who want to come in and you know like mentor and study but i tell you we're we're so busy we run a full-time business and so we don't bring in people to mentor um you know you try to train somebody on something and it takes you three times the amount of time to do what you need to do um so we don't do mentoring and i don't teach workshops on making the tensor tools you know, it used to be that anybody could pick up and make, you know, the tensor rings that we were making at that time, which anybody still can come along and being in the heart space and doing the work, you can bring through some phenomenal tensor rings and tensor fields, um, you know, using like the standard Chio Chibacon unit, things like that. But these newer rings and these newer fields that we're working in, it is something that you know, like the regeneration ring. We don't share that one. My nephew, who's my shop foreman, doesn't even twist that ring. You know, that ring in the beginning, um, you know, because you have to be the one to bring it through. And that thing about killed me in the beginning, bringing it through, because um, it was so intense. So, I mean, a lot of the new tools, no, we, we, we just don't share at this time those, um, frequencies but yet we still are very much about still getting all the other ones that anybody can pick up and safely make like all the ones from the beginning all the way up to the harmony ring the standard to con unit um those are the ones that i totally encourage people to make because that stu that harmony is actually starting to contain and if you're connecting into our etheric templates that harmony ring then is starting to contain more of these higher frequencies there they're starting to blend together um so anyway, and I will get over the questions tab. I'm going to do one more here on the chat side and then I'll get over the question. So if you guys could please um, put your questions on the question side and then um, let's see, does the Ascension Pyramid have to stay put for it to do the work? What happens if I want to take out some of the tools to work with them individually? Will, would it lose the power of the pyramid? So with the Ascension Pyramid, um, Yes, it takes all five pieces, the legs, the torus, the Gaia sphere, the wings of talk, and that harmonic creation field trio set of rings. It takes all of those pieces to hold that field at this very moment. But, um, you know, so you can take out that torus, that cosmic sun disk, and you can work with that. And if you're anywhere within the pyramid, it's going to still be holding that same energetics. But when you do take it out of the pyramid, um, you know, innately, yeah, you take that Taurus, that cosmic sun disk out of the pyramid and the pyramid won't be working. But if you have that cosmic sun disk still there in your home, just make the intention that they're working together. That's the thing, you guys, is we are so flipping powerful and in the things that we do. And so if you pull that Taurus out of the pyramid, just intend that it is still connected in there and it's still going to be doing the work. Um, all right, so here we go with some of the questions uh, from Bill. What effects might we expect in the neighborhood after deploying a quantum point at each four corners of the block? 
So when we use the quantum grid points and we are creating a space like that, um, it is going to be creating kind of like working with the, the golden fire generators is going to be very similar to setting up those quantum grid points in your neighborhood. Um, but the quantum grid points are just holding a little bit more. You can interact more with your intent and the soul intent, um, you know, for creating what that space is going to be held as. So when you set up those four quantum grid points in the neighborhood, basically it is going to raise the frequency and vibration. It'll clear over ghost waywards. It's going to, you know, just do the clearing work of not only electromagnetics, but, um, you know, it'll clear some of the, the dense thought forms that float around. Um, it's just basically going to hold that space for those who want to step up and in. It's going to hold the space for that to occur so much easier. Now, with these ascension grid points, it's not going to affect the people who want to stay asleep as much. It will still clear the um, a lot of the the things you know like the electromagnetics and the ghost waywards and you know just raise the frequency and vibration but it's not going to help them connect it's not going to well i mean unlike the golden fire generators the golden fire generators are going to go through and it's going to work with every soul within that area and with the quantum grid points innately it's just going to hold that space it's not going to um shift somebody if they don't want to shift um but yet it's going to hold the space for everybody else to shift and it will clear the area so that maybe those who don't want to shift right now can actually step in and step in and start doing that um let's see olivia said you lost sound about five minutes ago i'm assuming we still have sound on the system, so Olivia, please do. Well, I better just type it in for her. Please do. All right, and then we have another question here from Haley. I have a trio pendant with the lost sacred and empowerment qubit. Could you speak on what effects it may have? I was hoping it would be similar to the gateway pendant. Um, so the lost sacred and empowerment qubit, you know, and it, it really depends on who makes them too. Um, usually the lost and the sacred and the empowerment qubit don't have etheric templates. They are usually just a tensor ring that holds those specific frequencies of field, the 144 megahertz, the 177 megahertz, and the 188 megahertz. Now they are great rings, they, they are, but they're, they're, they only can take you so high. Um, those frequencies, they're, they're an older frequency. To me, they were created in more of that older energy paradigm. And so those three rings together, you know, they're gonna do great things for water, for electromagnetics, and even yourself. It will still, you know, keep you up higher in vibration, but, um, yeah, definitely it's not going to be like the harmonic creation field trio, the gateway pendant. That thing is, we actually stopped making the gateway pendant. Um, we no longer make that one because it served its purpose and we were, we're moving on from there. Um, basically, the gateway pendant was holding space for us to bring in our light more and holding space for us to do the release work of all that light that we're bringing in because our light is simply an incarnation of us somewhere in this universe and duality. As we bring in that light particle, uh, that incarnation of us, we were bringing in the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. And so we had to do the release work. And so that um, particular gateway pendant in the beginning was a little tough. And that's why we even have that little warning sign on there. That I think something like it'll kick your ass um, because it does, it, it brings the things up. And so we don't want to do that anymore. We, we have much easier ways now to bring in our light and harmonize it automatically without having to do as much of the work. So really the, I didn't understand that. Yeah, so really the gateway, um, it's, yeah, it, we're, we're, we're discontinuing the pendant. The, the gateway cell tab is still really phenomenal, but for, for working with the pendant, there's just a lot better, newer tools. Um, and sorry, Haley, I, yeah, I, I'd say 
try that out with water too and you'll be you know pleasantly surprised um bill what are the health effects of wearing quantum healer in a pandemic well basically it is going to the wearing you wear in the quantum healer is going to help you clear the chaos and the peace in your field and you know truly with, with anything if we are able to stand in our light and our power in our heart we affect everybody and everything around us um so yeah we're in the quantum healer so that you can be in the heart and stand in your power and just be and that's that's the name of the whole new paradigm it's just being we're, we're not it's a tough switch of paradigms because we always wanted to do we always wanted to anchor columns of light we wanted to clear stuff we wanted to do 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 and in these higher fields we're working in we don't do from a human perspective um and that's kind of like the quantum healer is that it is one of those that is you know that higher connecting one that higher space ones that um basically it's just going to harmonize the things that come into your field um so anyway um let's see and then a question on making the 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 elementals um the question is about the um the videos for making elementals we do have the one for making the hedica but we haven't made a video for making the the other elemental symbols and i really would like to do that so thank you haley for that and um yeah eventually we'll get there um and then a question from olivia the two ring practitioner set is golden fire and harmony the three ring loses harmony and Oh, okay. So there's a question on um, the, the harmonic creation field trio. Now, Olivia was asking about the practitioner set. Um, the practitioner set with the three is the harmony, the golden fire, and the regeneration ring. Now, on the practitioner rings, we do use the harmony as that third one. Now, on the water rings for, the, for that trio, we do use the earth resonance ring um, for the water ring trio because the earth resonance ring and the harmony ring in that trio are interchangeable. They, they are basically the, the grounder, they're, they're the earth connector. So you can use either one of those. It's just in the, the larger um, practitioner rings, we use the harmony instead of the um, earth resonance ring. Um, and then Let's see, what is the best tool that will passively protect the perimeter and interior of a property? Um, you know, Diane, I'd say the golden fire generator um, is, is, is just kind of your, your good standby. You know, the two and a half inch one's the most economical. It's, it's the same potency as the large one. So the two and a half inch golden fire generator for your property um, is, is absolutely the best one. Um, you know, occasionally, if you have, um, you know, really intense issues with geomagnetics and portal vortexes, things like that, then we'll suggest the Wings of Talk. Uh, the Wings of Talk d does not have that huge sphere of influence like the Golden Fire Generator does. The Golden Fire Generator will cover about two miles of an area where the Wings of Talk is more like mm, around 200 feet. I mean, it'll cover your property. But the Wings of Talk is the one that is a little bit more um, in depth at uh, doing the environmental work, but the gold fire generator usually will cover everything for your property. Um, and hey, you see none. Can every tool activate the quantum heart? Did you embed the etheric templates? So the quantum heart. Um, no, actually, that quantum heart activation is not in any of the tools well hmm I'm trying to remember if we did you know i i don't know actually the quantum heart activation itself is something that you still need to walk through the meditation with that that one meditation that i have on the youtube with brenda uh which is um the quantum heart activation with brenda schnoes that one so you still have to actually go through the um the activation process but yet like the the ascension grids it's going to hold that field of that quantum heart and it can bring the remembrance but it'll hold the space for you to more easily activate that quantum heart 
by having um, any of any of the tools in your field. Um, yeah, sorry I can't answer that one any better, Sinan. Um, Bernard, I love my Cosmic Sun Disk. Yay, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do. Have you ever used it with water, like in a bath? What would be the best tools to use in the bath? So, Renard, yeah, I've been, you know, I don't take my, my Tauruses or my Sun Disks into the water because they get so patinaed, and I like to try to keep them, you know, a little bit cleaner looking for the Tauruses for some reason, I don't know. Um, otherwise, I, I like the patine, copper patina on all the other tools. Um, the five and a half inch golden fire generator is a phenomenal one for water. So if I ever go someplace and go into like public pools, I'll always take the five and a half inch golden fire generator and just take that into the water. And it does some amazing work, especially if you're consciously working with it and what it does for the clearing of the water to create, um, you know, that high vibrational space within the water. And you can actually, you know, basically create a healing elixir, you know, by just, you know, putting in the intention of what it is that you want to broadcast into the water uh, for frequencies. Pretty, pretty phenomenal. Um, and then, yeah, totally use that five and a half inch golden fire um, Gaia sphere in my bath to the Gaia sphere. I don't know if I said generator, but it's the five and a half inch Gaia sphere. Um, let's see. And then Diane, do the wings of talk radiate in a column or is it more diffused? So the wings of talk, it actually, it's, um, see it as a column. So you see it as this column, but then here in the center, it kind of comes out in like this disc. No, yeah. Kind of like a disc. So that disc is right here on the earth plane. So basically you have above and below. And so that's where that field is, is this right here, and then it tapers up into a column and tapers down into a column. Um, so that's how the Wings of Talk sits. All right. Oh, hey, there's 10 new questions above here. All right, we'll get back to some questions. Samson, good to see you too, brother. Um, is there going to be a newer light anchoring update? Quite possibly, I tell you, we are in the middle of a huge paradigm shift again still. Um, so any new tools or frequencies coming, holy smokes. What was it? Um, two weeks ago, it was. I was making a ring for the Master Radionics Convention that we have somewhat locally here um, that I speak at every year. And oftentimes I'll make a ring specifically for this convention for use with radionic equipment for broadcasting, um, not only to amplify and to lessen broadcast times, but also to ensure that all is beneficial in the broadcast. So as we were making a ring two weeks ago, well, this is actually the ring that came through. And then we made some pendants and I got those out to the guys, at the radionics before we knew what we really had. This ring contains every tensor ring ever created right here in this field. Pretty phenomenal. Um, within this field, there's like creation energy. You can with consciousness make a hologram, but you cannot manifest that hologram into physical yet. There's actually like um, guardians of sorts, kind of like Heimdall, who's the etheric, uh, he's the protector of the etheric tools. Um, this ring in that field kind of have a similar safeguard in that we're not going to be able to use this um, to create until, you know, we, we, we've done our work until we can step into creator status by being clean and clear and, and uh, not recreating. So yes, this ring contains every flipping template, every tensor ring made pre-Egyptian, Atlantean, 
all of it is in here. But yes, there's a new ring coming through. Something new that has not been in creation. And that is coming through really, really soon, we hope. So yeah, no, this is, you know, we don't have these for sale. Sorry, you guys. Um, the, we only made a small run of these for, for everybody here at the studio in our circle to work with. Um, you know, well, just our family and our studio because we really want to find out what they are and what they're doing, just like we do with anything new. We always um, ensure that it is, you know, we, we work with it first. So um, it's kind of like the regeneration ring. We didn't release that one for six months because that one was wow. So yeah, there's, there's some new things coming through and I would love to um, know more about them myself. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Robert, seems like the English Royal Crown has a circumference of 66 centimeters. Would you know if this is a sacred measure from the pyramids? Um, 66 centimeters does not sound familiar for sacred measures. Um, yeah, no, I've never heard of, of a 66 millimeter. I'm trying to think of just some fractions of it to see, you know, if I, if, if that rings a bell. But yeah, no, Robert, that's not ringing a bell with that, um, with that measurement. But you know, there's so many different measurements out there that, you know, you can, some of them, will make tensor rings, but the majority of them will not. Some of them will make like straight line, you know, frequencies when you put them into straight lines like these. Um, and some of them won't. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of cubit measures, but they don't all, you know, make, make fields. Um, and so that field to me, it almost seems like that was more of a personal thing and, and of a personal creation of intention um, versus, you know, a tensor field. Uh, Julie, is the 15-inch golden fire ring the same as the one in the practitioner set in terms of energy capacity? Yes. So um, any size of tensor ring is going to be the same power and potency. doesn't matter if it's 29-inch or the 1-inch. Now, what, we've, what we find is that the heavier the gauge, the more we can feel it on the physical. But, you know, that doesn't matter. It's not a super heavy ring here. Well, I try to keep some rings out so that, um, you know, for props, but there it is on my wrist. You know, so this heavier ring, you feel more in the physical than this ring, you know, but really if they're the same frequency and you hold them side by side, um, energetically, they're exactly the same. So yes, the 15 inch golden fire ring will bring through the same as the larger ones. Uh, does the Ascension Pyramid create a portal for entities to cross over? Um, for, for ghosts, waywards, yes. Um, any, basically, it's not like there's a portal. Um, what, what it does is that any of the golden fire tools or the Ascension Pyramids, they create a field that brings through that sacred heart activation. And when a ghost wayward comes into that field to re and he receives the sacred heart activation, it's the soul that comes in to do the activation, then the soul takes him across. So yeah, for ghost waywards, totally the, the, the ascension pyramid will cross them over because it's working with their soul because their soul will come in. Um, let's see, I know you recommend against sleeping at night in the ascension pyramid due to the intensities of energies, but is there any downside to this? My apologies, I'm going to change the entire ascension pyramid page. Actually, we've updated the ascension pyramids now physically. Um, so that we have a little bit new construction, some updates on the construction, and that has not been put on the website yet. And so I do need to update that Ascension Pyramid website. And part of that is, I'm going to also say that, yeah, sleep under that thing. Um, it's going to disrupt your sleep for the first night, of course. Yeah, I could only sleep six hours under it the first time. Um, but yeah, I and I don't sleep with it now. I I don't feel I need to, but you, some nights I really should um, sleep with that thing. And we're, we're setting up a new system with those Ascension Pyramids now too, so that you can, you can buy the 18 inch one. Um, well, we, how, how we have, you can get the 18 inch one, you can get the Sith Pyramid or the full size eight foot one, and they're all interchangeable. They work with each other. Before you had, they were three separate products. 
No, they harmonize, they work together so you can expand. Um, and then with that, that smallest one, we're going to we're going to get it revised here in the next couple of weeks so you can actually hang that smallest 18 inch one above your bed and the legs even though they're 18 inches they energetically go down through into the earth and so it'll basically create you can hang this thing above your house and it will create that entire size pyramid so it's pretty exciting um there uh julie what's the next what is the best tool to use for neck pain um you know, and it really depends on what the neck pain is from. Um, pardon me. Got my, my breakfast there. Um, we have, we're probably going to start bringing out the collar rings again um, one of these days, but they're one that you could wear around the neck. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I'd say just about anything that you can do to run energy to that neck is going to help. Um, people tape Wi-Fi rings on the back of their neck. Some people would just, you know, grab their wand and wand it, either with the golden fire and light wand or the shaman wand, the dragon wand, the quantum healer, and basically just run energy to it that way too. Um, you can get, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. There's the golden fire rings. There's an 11 inch one. It's, it's a little bit heavier, but it can slip over the neck depending on your hat size, your head size. Um, you know, I've seen some people be able to get the, the eight inch golden fire water ring over their head to sit on their neck. And that's a little bit lighter gauge. And then there's also the, that um, regeneration um, water ring that's the largest one that's a lighter weight and that's one that can be sat down and then if you do use that light one of those lighter gauge rings um, basically you can bend that so it kind of curves so that it sits on your shoulders it doesn't have to be a, a, a circle in a single plane you can actually bend that a little bit so that it, it just actually sits down on the shoulders so those are some thoughts Julie on on the neck pain and to me, it just looks like you got some vertebrae crunched up in there is just what I see, feel. Um, and I'll send you some energy too while we're doing this. Uh, Robert, have you ever thought of making a hat insert or is a bracelet just as good for the whole body? I think Slim had a ring outside of Stetson hat. I've never been balancing the golden fire Gaia sphere on my head and I think it feels a, feel its effects after taking it off you know the or the golden fire generator so yeah you know we we were making that halo for a while that had the infinity and it was a thin ring but you know we were almost seeing that as a novelty item because it really wasn't doing anything extra for us versus wearing a ring on your wrist um but with this new frequency of course you know we're making all the tools like collar rings and halos and we, we might actually release some halos again um like i say right now we're just kind of up in the air right now with everything because of the new tools coming through and so um but i would like to make a halo um yeah because i know slim always wore that ring in his hat um Will the sticky tab work used for the gateway cell phone tab work for the gateway? Okay. Will the sticky tab used for the gateway cell phone tab work for the gateway pendant? Um, so, okay. So the question about using the gateway pendant as um, to, to stick onto something. And no, because the gateway tab has resin in it. So it has a solid surface on the back versus the gateway pendant that is just the open rings, but it does have that one weld spot you can certainly stick that gateway um, pendant with one of the cell phone sticky tabs onto something but i wouldn't trust you know i wouldn't trust it on your phone because that's going to peel off your phone um, but if you're putting it onto like a computer or electrical panel or something like that then yeah totally however you would fix that that um, gateway pendant 
would be absolutely perfect. Um, let's see, Olivia just got her sound back. Would love to hear the explanations. Um, Olivia, what was the question? Um, let's see. Oh, Olivia was asking about the practitioner rings. So the practitioner rings, there's the, um, the golden fire and the, um, holy, draw on a blank, and the regeneration ring. And then in the practitioner rings, there's the harmony. Now, the practitioner rings, we always use the harmony. Now, in the harmonic creation field trio, like the water rings, we use the, um, the earth resonance ring in, replace of, in, in place of the harmony ring. So in the trio, the harmony ring and the earth resonance ring are going to be doing the same work. So, um, but yes, in the practitioner sets, we do use the harmony. Um, let's see, make, let's see where we're at here. I think I might have missed some questions, so please bear with me. Thank you, guys. I about need to have a second person here to read questions. I think. Um, all right. Okay. Going back up to the top, I just want to make sure that we covered everybody's questions there. Um, let's see, Diane, do you still have a world map of the Ascension Pyramids? If so, where can it be found? Oh, gosh. Oh, I need to get somebody on updating all of those because we haven't updated that, um, that Ascension grid on Google Maps for at least a month or two. And um, so we really do need to update that. And gosh, I'm trying to think of where the link is to to find that. Um, it should be on one of the Ascension Pyramid pages, or I think it's actually on the, the Quantum Grid Point page too, is where that should be as well. And there should be a link to that Google map where we do have quite a few of, of the grid points already on there. Um, Oh, let's see, Marin, I'm not sure you were asking what's its name again and which one is this, and I'm not sure what it is that you're referring to there. Um, have you researched adding plasma to any of your products? Um, you know, we've, we've worked with um, some of the guys from Keisha Foundation and you know, they actually put it into, well, I was told anyway, that they put it into their formula to use tensor rings in the production of GANs um, because it it's different. It changes it. It's better. It's it's a different quality. Um, so, you know, and when when I had some of those guys that came through working with Keisha Foundation and, and the GANs and stuff, um, you know, we they made some rings and they put the you know, plastic tubes on it and they filled it with GANs and everything. But I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm biased. I, I just feel the tensor rings. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and, and that's it is, you know, Alice Violet is that the, the tensor fields are, gosh, they're, they're so versatile. And um, so I haven't done the research using the plasma, but yeah, I, I, I certainly would encourage anybody to do research with tensor fields and, and other modalities and energy tools. Uh, Terry, is the illuminated heart within the infinite light pendant? Uh, no, so the infinite light pendant, which I don't have on here, actually contains the, um, the golden fire infinity. So that one is just the... the um, the infinite heart, not the illuminated heart. The illuminated heart is the regeneration ring. Um, so the um, those two together with that illuminated heart pendant, which has, it's the silver, which has that outside ring that is the regeneration ring that's bringing through that blue light. And then that little infinity in there, that's the golden fire that is doing more of the heart connect. And the, those two frequencies are working together really well. Um, Oh, and the, the question is about the little ring. No, it doesn't have a name. Uh, no clue. 
no clue what it is. And the funny thing is, is every time we twist one of these up, it's different. I wanted to make a tensor field generator out of this ring. So I said like, okay, okay, I'm going to make a twist tensor field generator, twisted it up, put the tensor field generator together, two of them, because I wanted to wear them on my wrist. Something wasn't right. So chopped them apart and found out this is a tensor field generator. Yeah, well, I tell you, creation right now is off the hook, you guys. Um, watch your thoughts. So, um, yeah, ring doesn't have a name yet. And really don't know what's going to be going on with, with releasing of everything. Um, like I say, we just have to work with everything first. So, um, let me make sure it looks like. We have everything on the questions page answered. And I'm going to pop over here with chat and see what's happening over here. Um, Tasha, I'm selling my house. Will pyramid still work if it's folded down and put away? Um, no, it's not. But all the pieces are still going to be doing great things. But it does have to be assembled for it to be working there. You can, um, <clears throat> Tasha, I think that you could probably, since you know the energetics of that pyramid, I think you could probably anchor it in and maybe use, so I'm thinking the cosmic sun disk is that you probably set that in your space and just go into the heart and, um, Visualize that pyramid being there and visualize that pyramid being the size of your home and using that cosmic sun disk to anchor that in so that way you don't have to hold your attention to have that held there. Um, oh, yay. So who is asking um, about the videos for the elementals? Our good friend Samson here has made um, videos on Hedica, Plymella, and Colleen, but not on the Chiselle yet. Um, just search how to make copper elementals. Um, yeah, so yeah, Samson's, Samson's a pretty phenomenal being there, and I'm glad that he's sharing a lot of that info. Um, let's see. So let's see, and then Tamper's mentioning the salt and white vinegar work well for cleaning the copper tools. I have some of the silver tools, but don't have anything for cleaning the brass on the quantum healers. Do you have any suggestions on how to clean the quantum healers? Um, you know, it's, it's pretty wild how different chemistries and different environments will patina things up so flipping fast, um, you know, because here in our dry environment here in South Dakota and um, you know with all of us wearing them we usually don't have problems with Tenon but I tell you we get some pretty horrific pictures back of silver tools and quantum healers that have been patinaed up and um, so what I would suggest for the quantum healer would be toothbrush get your toothpaste and toothbrush and brush them up um, because that will get and so, of course, in the quantum healer, the little brass part in there spins, so you'll be able to get all parts of that. Um, the vinegar and salt should clear, actually, the, um, the brass, because the brass is mostly copper. So the brass, um, that vinegar and salt should do pretty well on here. Um, but then the silver, you know, using a toothbrush and toothpaste is what a lot of the research that we've seen people talk about using that on silver. Um, so for the quantum healer, that's what I would suggest is trying that toothbrush and toothpaste. Um, let's see, and mentioning about the collar ring, and yes, we'd really love to get that collar ring um, up and available here again. And once we get the new frequencies, I think that um, we're gonna be making a lot more new tools in these frequencies. Um, let's see. And yeah, thank you guys for your patience as I scroll through here and make 
sure you got questions. Um, you mentioned that you discontinued the gateway pendant because you have tools that bring in your light more with ease. What, what were you referring to? So basically, um, from the gateway pendant, any of the tools made after that, which would be the infinite light pendant or the copper version, the regenerative heart pendant, um, the quantum healer, obviously the Taurus pendant, um, trying to think what other ones. Yeah, and that's, I think those are it since we've made the gateway pendant are those ones. So yeah, you know, the quantum healers are pretty flipping fantastic, especially for their price point. Um, you know, so the quantum healers are ones that I recommend a lot to people and, you know, you can get them on the silver chain, but I just, I like to have my quantum healer actually on a clasp so that I can clasp it onto, you know, a chain. Well, I'm not wearing anything, but the new frequency stuff right now getting acclimated. Um, so yeah, Haley, just any of the um, quantum healers, infinite light or regenerative heart pendant would be the ones. All right. And yes, there will be a replay of this video. Um, since you signed up and you are on, you will actually receive an email with that replay um, shortly after we end. So, yeah. There's that new ring. Um, it's a pretty phenomenal field. And if you can catch on to it, Actually, just imagine yourself standing right there inside of that column, right in that ring. Ooh, boy, there's a few people jumping in there. So, yeah, I'm just holding it. Uh, there's none of my energy going in there. It's just holding the ring for you for that column to stand in. Um, let's do some quick journey work then you guys. So Brenda's been taking everybody through, you know, that whole thing of on that video for the, um, for the quantum heart activation of, of doing the, um, gosh, what, what does she do in that video? I'm pretty sure she brings the soul in um, and that helps you clear programs. I don't remember if she does in that video or not. I'm pretty sure. So, Brenda has simplified everything a lot more because that's really the name of the entire paradigm of heart-based consciousness is simplification. Otherwise, we're too much in the head. Um, so keeping it simple. Um, so let's go through this um, journey here real quick and then, um, then I'll see you guys next Friday. I'm pretty sure. So as Brenda says, go to your heart soul before you again to go to your heart putting your attention onto your light your soul's fire within your heart connecting your light to the light of Gaia to the heart of the earth and then connecting your light to the light of creation to the heart of creation and then breathing both of those in together within you mixing them together, sending them back out. So you are a column of light that is grounded, connected, and expanded. As you are in your heart, soul before you, imagine your soul standing before you. To me, it usually presents as this golden luminescent being, perhaps it's a orb. Whatever it is, it is your soul within this space this sacred space. We ask the soul to release programs that no longer serve, programs throughout all time, all space, all dimensions. That is the areas that the soul will be working in. You don't have to specify time, space, dimension. The soul is gonna do it. Also asking the soul to clear and release traumas.
you can also ask for belief structures to be dissolved. To me, I see these belief structures as just these crystalline structures outside of our field. They just present as almost like a blue crystal. And we just watch those dissolve belief structures. The soul does it. Lastly, we ask the soul to release all vows, vows, oaths, promises, those that no longer serve us, so we don't have to walk with those. Releasing all vows throughout all time. So as you go through your day and things come up, the emotions, the traumas, the negative thoughts, the self-talk, the interactions, the issues, your reactions to other people, to situations, to things. When any of that happens, just stop, go into the heart space, ask the soul to stand before you, and ask the soul to clear that program, trauma, whatever it is. And you don't even have to say that. Don't, you don't have to be specific. In the heart, soul before you, ask the soul to release those energies that you have just become aware of. Simple as that. So, thank you guys for being here. Um, yeah, just keep doing that work as much as you can throughout the day. Just stop, go into the heart, soul before you, ask for the release of those energies. Um, you know, space is being held for us right now for this release, and we're not going to be able to step into creator status until we do that work. And Another thing uh, really quick that I wanted to share that came up with me recently was the forgiveness work that um, I had avoided a little while ago, about a year ago, um, with the situation that came up. And I got a big spiritual two by four here earlier this week. And it was about forgiveness. So that night I spent about five hours in front of the mirror doing the hope Hono Ono, um, which is... You know, the, the Ho'oponono, it's the, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And if you say those things with, in the heart, with that utmost conviction, it's, it's huge. And then after you work on yourself, then you work on everything else. Um, so that Ho'oponono is a big thing. Um, and it, it was for me anyway. And I've heard Brenda talk about that. Yeah, that has been something that's been coming up for a lot of people too, is the forgiveness work. Um, forgiveness of self, forgiveness, forgiveness of others, and even forgiveness of creator and soul. Um, anyway, thank you guys for being here. Have a fantastic week. Um, keep in the heart as much as you can and keep doing the work. And we'll probably see you next week here. All right. Thank you, guys.